well, the statue of St. Clair is in its third phase now. So this is the finishing process. So I'm doing the refinements. So right now the uh, width of the head is a little bit too uh, wide and not rounded enough on the top. And then I'm going to be working more on the face. I'm going to uh, then carve the monstrance. And so all my cuts are going to be finished cuts. So we're going to be doing the finishing now in the third phase going all the way down. So this is the third and final phase. This is where I'm going to get all the texture with the chisels. Just get that final feeling in the whole carbon. St. Clair is the patron saint of eyes for clear vision and uh, so I'm really trying to do the eyes very well. Putting a little emphasis on the eyes. shoulder down a little bit on this side. The texture we're putting in is simulating a cloth that is like wool, fairly thick wool. So this is not going to be very smooth cloth. I'm leaving the texturing on like that. Okay, now we're working on the focal point, which is the Eucharist, the monstrance holding the Eucharist. And I want to do some very uh, decorative carving to put more attention to the focal point. And <clears throat> I don't want this to resemble chip carving. There's really nothing wrong with chip carving, but it's got a very precise pattern and uh, it's very rigid. I want this to kind of flow. I want it to have the effect of some chip carving, but in reality this is gold and uh, uh, very decorative and I want to create that same effect in wood, but something that just flows easily. If something was very rigid here and very precisely measured, I think it would be more distracting. So we're just trying to get something here that will draw the eye. And you can see my drawing isn't very precise. It's just going to be a guideline, to, uh, something to uh, start carving on. So I'm moving the forehead back a little bit.
I'm going to try not to touch the eyebrows. Just slope the top part of the forehead back. So here's another little trick that I learned from Ivan Willock. Uh, take a couple short bent uh, number three gouges and uh, sharpen them a pair of them into a skews like this. And they're very handy to get into places like under the chin. But this is a particularly difficult spot to carve right back in here to smooth it off. And these with that skew action and that number three uh, sweep is very handy to get into areas that are closed in that you can't get right in front of. And so uh, you can uh, get a skew chisel off to the side and it's just like pulling the chisel straight down from the top because of the angle on it. Very handy. Very good tip that I got from Ivan Willock. So we're in the process of smoothing, reducing the size of the large chisel marks, taking it down to the small chisel mark, just just enough to where you can see the facets and that it was hand done, and just to kind of show the skill of the carver. One of the tools that is very handy at doing this is I took a bench knife and uh, I'm using it like a skew chisel. So I sharpen the end like a skew chisel, but except for it being straight across, I made a slight curve. And that curve is really nice for getting into little hollowed out areas to smooth. And I keep moving the light around so I can see where the different facets are from the larger chisel cuts and just making them smaller and just getting a real nice effect to almost like it's a wool veil. Nice thing with the skew chisel is you can push it and it, it skews the cut. It's almost like sawing the wood. It cuts very nice. You can see the cuts that I'm taking are just very small. I'm going to leave the cuts a little bit more visible here. When I get to the face, then that's where I got to really reduce the size of the facets to where it looks almost smooth. And that'll be done with the same tool. And I also use my gouges for the hollows and so forth. So here I'm roughing in this other foot. getting the flow of the clothes. And again, I have to protect the toes because if they stuck out, they would break off. So the clothing over the top of the toes offers some protection.
So the monstrance was too thick here. I need to keep it attached here for strength, but uh, I'm moving the face of it back. So I've narrowed up these points and uh, moving back each of these uh, planes. Well, we're almost finished with uh, the third phase of the smoothing and the details. And what I'm going to do before I go any further and uh, get it ready to put a sealer on it, I'm going to take this fin off the back and hollow out a section of it. Uh, it'll take some of the weight off. Normally, if you have a laminated piece like this, it's never going to crack. But if you had a solid piece that wasn't glued up like from a, a tree, then you would hollow it out for stability to keep it from cracking. This won't crack if I don't hollow it out, but I'm going to hollow it out uh, and uh, we're going to make a time capsule. So I'm going to cover it with a piece of plywood and they can uh, put in things for the time capsule and years later they can uh, see what they've got. Well, the cavity is just about carved out. It is two inches deep, three inches wide, and 16 inches long. Uh, that's a nice size to put stuff in for a time capsule. It's also taking off a little bit of weight in the back. The weight really isn't an issue. This is a fairly light statue. It's going to have a hole drilled here. This is the main support. It'll be a little larger hole. We'll have a small hole down on this end and that is just going to have a little peg to keep it from pivoting. So in the smoothing process, one of the real handy tools, or really two tools, one is a right hand and a left hand, but <clears throat> it's a short bent number three gouge. These are Stubai gouges and the number is 24. That's the number of the tool. So it's a number three sweep. It's a short bent and then it comes with a flat on the end and I ground it to a skew on both of them. Now that is pretty handy to get into really tight spots. So if you've got a blind spot right underneath these arms for instance, it's very tough to get into. Uh, these are real handy to do that. However, there are some spots in here that I'm still with these tools not able to smooth it, completely smooth it off. So I am using sandpaper and uh, there's uh, just a couple spots in here. There's some other spots that I'm having difficulty smoothing it. So what I'm saying is that it's okay to use sandpaper. Uh, you know, in some of these spots, and these spots are going to be pretty hidden. They're not going to be able to uh, really see uh, once you get the stain on and all of that. It's going to take the stain a little bit differently, but it's so much in shadow it won't be noticeable. So the sandpaper that I'm using is a aluminum oxide 3M sandpaper and it is 120 grit. You don't want to go too fine on the sandpaper because it will seal the wood and it won't take the stain. So uh, I went and I picked up some stain and I'm experimenting with colors. One of the problems with soft wood like this is that when you try to go dark it gets blotchy. So I'm having some, this is about the color we're going to, a little bit lighter than this. So I'm using general finishes stains on this and it's an oil based stain, but I'm trying to put on a conditioner, um, it's like a sanding sealer, to partially seal the surface so it doesn't uh, 
get uh, blotchy. You see how blotchy this is looking, and I am trying to work with this and uh, not get it blotchy. So on the ingrain, the stain wants to go real deep, soak in, uh, and the sanding sealer keeps it from soaking in very deep. So that's how we're going to even out the uh, stain. I still want it to be darker in the recessed areas and in the shadows. I want to put, make it darker. So I want to get some of this wipe off look here. And so that's what I'm trying to reproduce. I need it fairly smooth so it'll take the stain pretty evenly. After I put the stain on, the stain has got a sealer in it <coughs> and just like the wood conditioner has a little sealer in also. Uh, and those raise the grain. So I will be uh, needing to sand because that raised grain needs to be knocked down. So that sanding I'll be doing with like a 400 emery. The idea is not to do so much sanding as you lose your chisel marks. You want to smooth it so it feels smooth, but you still want to be able to see the facets. That's what I'm trying to achieve, the facets of the chisel cuts. But I want it to feel smooth and just so you can see that there are cuts, individual cuts that are made. Needed to open that up a little bit. It wasn't quite wide enough to get my uh, veiner through the bottom of that. There, now it's cleaning it. Rounding that bottom very nice. We're in the final stages of putting the finished coat, the stain on. The customer has sent me photos and it's the St. Francis statue that I am going to uh, uh, match. And so uh, the stain that I'm going to be using, all the finishing products, the sealing coat is uh, all general finishes. This is an armor seal. I'm using a satin so there won't be any shine to it. And uh, the stain is a uh, Danish teak stain. But I'm cutting the stain six parts of the uh, uh, top coat with one part of the stain. The color is right but the hue is a little bit too intense. So uh, and then I'm using before I put on the stain it's a uh, pre-stain which is a wood conditioner. All these are oil based products they're all from general finishes and it's all part of a finishing system. So before I start I am making samples and this sample was to test how much of the uh, stain I should cut back with the top coat. And uh, so I've come up with uh, the six to one is about the color that and the tone that I want to match what's in the photo. Uh, the other thing I'm concerned about because we're going down quite a ways in color, we're uh, uh, being darker than the wood, so I'm worried about it being blotchy, especially on the face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some clear wood before I do the face. After I put the, top, uh, the conditioner on, then the conditioner is going to set for a few hours, not overnight because i got to stain it the same day. Then uh, when I get to the face and the hands, I'm going to put a clear coat of the top coat on it first and that will seal the pores more so when I put the stain on it uh, hopefully it won't end up being blotchy. The basswood is such a soft wood that the stain really soaks into the ingrain and not so much on the face and so that's what makes it look blotchy. 
and the fact that it's carved and all the different facets are uh, cut in, that that stain is going to take in all those different facets. So that's the reason for uh, cutting it back also using the top coat with the uh, uh, stain. That will control some of the absorption of the stain, keep it onto the surface. I'm using uh, bristle brushes, I use the disposable brushes and uh, I'm not concerned at all about bristles being left on here. There's definitely going to be a few bristles and I'll be able to pick those off after it dries. It's not going to affect the color or the finish at all. This is a wipe-on conditioner and I'm using a brush because uh, with the irregular surface it's difficult to wipe it on. The important thing about the application is to put on enough and enough is a big uh, uh, you know let it soak in it's soaking in very well into the softwood and that's what's going to keep uh, the stain from uh, going into the end grain as soon as I put it on it's the, it soaks in almost immediately and so I'm just really trying to get the wood to soak up all of this preconditioner. So I'm applying this conditioner and just trying to get it so the surface stays wet just a little while with it. It's still soaking in very rapidly on the end grain. The tops of the arm here, the top of the head, in the face area. I just wanted to have that wet look for just a little while to know that it is just about soaked in all it's going to do. So this is the wipe on stain that I'm brushing on and it's soaking in very quickly. Uh, what I'm doing is uh, just keep reapplying it until I'm getting down to the color that I'm looking for. Now the face I said I was going to put on a clear finish first and I'm ready to do that now. So this is just the, and it's a different brush here, so it's just the Armor Seal uh, top coat and uh, this is what I'm going to first soak the surface with this clear. Make sure it's all very nice and wet right around that face. This will keep it from turning blotchy. Okay, now I'm going to gently brush on the stain. I don't mind if the face is a little bit lighter. And I'll keep brushing it until I get rid of all the blotchiness out of there. This is going to raise the grain a little bit so I need to go back after this dries and I will be putting a, a, a very light sanding coat on it and it will be about a 400 grit emery. This cloth here going across the front on our shoulders is the but I really wanted that different texture and that's coming out just the way I want it. So the first coat of stain is on and the uh, what it, 
has done is it raised all the fibers, so it feels very rough. You can feel the, the fibers have swelled up and they are sticking out. And so the 400 emery is what I'm using to uh, smooth it off. And it takes a quite a bit of rubbing with the 400 emery because it does, uh, there is a lot of grain that's sticking up. So what it's doing uh, in order to get it to feel smooth is I'm taking quite a bit of the um, uh, cut. Start over again. The stain is on. It's all dry. It's uh, the fibers in the wood have swelled up and uh, now it feels like it's uh, rough again. So I'm using a 400 grit emery uh, paper for the sanding off these fibers and smoothing the statue down. So I'm trying to get it so it all feels nice and smooth. The reason why I'm using 400 is I'm trying not to take off the uh, chisel marks. So I still want to show some chisel marks in there. And the 400 grit is quite fine and it does not sand off all the chisel marks. So we've put on the wood conditioner and while the wood conditioner was still wet when it soaked in, then we put the stain on. Now I also accented with the stain, I put a little darker stain. We cut the initial stain down, it was uh, six to one, six parts of clear finish to one part of stain. And then I used a darker stain in here and hopefully now when I sand that will all smooth out and uh, I want to show these uh, folds in there with a the little darker stain. Now after the second coat the wood fiber should no longer swell up. The carving is now sealed So it should remain smooth after the second coat. So after the next coat, then I will be rubbing it down with a 600 grit and probably putting on three coats. So the one coat is on, I need two more coats on. Well, this is the second coat that I'm putting on and it's uh, the General Finishes uh, top coat, uh, which is a satin, which will not shine and uh, so the stain is done and the second coat is just to clear and then I will be putting on a third coat which is going to be the same same stuff it'll be the clear with no shine just for a little added protection well this is the finished product the customer gave me a photo to match the finished color. Uh, it matches pretty good. Thank you.